Hey guys, it's Melissa Merrill from Pro Organizer Bootcamp. I'm popping on here today to deliver just a quick message, kind of a ranty video of sorts, um, all about why I do not think that you need to have a certification to become a successful pro organizer. So professional home organizing is a relatively new industry. Over the past 10 years, I've seen it grow and change and really take off. And if you've seen some of my Instagram stories and Instagram posts about this, also in our Pro Organizer Bootcamp Facebook group, then you know my stance is that you do not need a professional certification, those little letters after your last name, to become the organizer that you've always wanted to be. So I firmly believe that Pro organizing is something that is natural, a God-given gift, a God-given talent, a skill that is honestly, it's kind of hard to teach and it's kind of hard to train. And in my opinion, in the past few years of hiring and scaling and growing over the past 10 years of growing my own business, let's get you organized. I've realized that some people have it and some people don't. And if you are that little girl, usually, you know, usually in my videos, I'm speaking to women. So just as a heads up, um, if you've seen any of my marketing, um, that's pretty much all of my clients and everybody in my Facebook group. But that being said, as little girls, we were typically very organized, very tidy, very perfectionist maybe a little bit OCD, maybe a little bit type A, overachievers, those types of personalities. Um, also more like logic brain where, you know, you can walk into a space and kind of play Tetris and see where everything needs to go and know exactly almost like the exact dimensions without even measuring. I know that for myself, I can eyeball something and go, oh, that's either going to fit or that's not going to fit, or I need this size bin or I need that size basket. And you kind of get, get the hang of it. And we're usually very uh, naturally organized people, naturally tidy people, and naturally um, able to space plan and really design and kind of, like I said, play Tetris in your head, so to speak. So that being said, something came up uh, in my Facebook feed today, not in my Facebook group, not in the Pro Organizer Bootcamp Mastermind Facebook group, but in just a Facebook group that I'm in, in the local professional organizer community here in the United States. And um, it was something that honestly caught me off guard because somebody had just posted as a newbie professional organizer, uh, you know, a woman that was looking to get into the space and just excited. And you can kind of tell by her post, which I'll show you here in a second, that she was really eager to get into the industry. And in my opinion, that is the most exciting time when you're just starting to get those little ideas bubbling up. Like, oh my gosh, I want to become an organizer. I didn't even know this was a thing. I didn't even know I could get paid to do this. I've always been good at organizing. I've been doing it for my friends and family and my own home for years. And it's this like excitement of like, like, oh my gosh, I can actually get paid to do what I love. And so that is honestly the most magical time in business. When you start to get that bug in your ear, when you start to get that idea, that inspiration, you start thinking about, oh my gosh, what would I name my business? And what would my brand colors and fonts look like? And, oh, I could start a social media page and maybe like put, put, put some before and after photos on there, even just with friends and family work starting off my portfolio, or even just photos of my own home, things like that, where I love that stage of business with my clients and with the organizers that are in my mastermind and in my Facebook group, those that listen to my podcast, watch my YouTube channel, because that is the essence of entrepreneurship. Like, holy cow, I could potentially leave my nine to five someday, or I could potentially start a new career in this new field. And I don't want to discount that. That is an inspirational, motivational, super exciting time in business. And it kills me to see other people, specifically other women, kind of bashing other women or other people putting other people down, telling them you're not good enough, telling them like just kind of putting their thumb out on that fire. And that is no bueno in my book. So like I said, today's video is going to be a little bit different than what I usually put out here on YouTube and on the podcast. But basically, I will share my screen here in a second for those of you listening to this on YouTube watching on YouTube, and it'll also air to the podcast. But let me go ahead, share my screen, and I'm going to kind of show you what I mean about the post that came up in my Facebook feed and just kind of have some dialogue around this, my opinions, my thoughts. And again, take everything that you see on the internet with a grain of salt. You don't have to listen to me. You don't have to listen to this person or that person or whoever in the Facebook groups. Take everything that comes into your sphere and your realm 
with discernment, right? Use your own opinion. How do I feel about this? You know, really check in with yourself when you're getting feedback on Facebook or feedback on Instagram, feedback on TikTok, right? Um, so let me go ahead and I will share my screen. So this is um, the post that was up on this, you know, Facebook group. Like I said, it wasn't my Facebook group and I'll read it to you. It's, uh, it's from this woman that, you know, is very clearly excited to get into the industry. About to begin my PO, aka pro organizer, about to begin my pro organizer journey. Emoji with some hearts. I'm moving to new to a new town in a couple months. What's some advice for sites to use for self-advertory advertising or creating and ordering business cards, etc.? Should I be using Shutterfly, Vistaprint, Zazzle? Right. So this is coming from somebody that's just getting started. She's super excited. She's using emojis and exclamation points. She's moving to a new town. She's ready to get her new business started. And she's just looking for a little bit of advice. Now, this is not a Facebook group that has, you know, thousands and thousands of people in it. I think it's one of the smaller groups. I usually just like to be in these occasionally all you know, comment back to people or answer a question here and there, maybe once a month, if I have time, if I'm sitting at a stoplight or if I'm waiting at a dentist appointment or something, this isn't something that I, you know, am one of those commenters that's like spamming all of these Facebook groups, but this is just something that came up on my feed and I was like, oh, that's cute. Like, let me just respond to her and cheer her on, right? To women supporting women, community over competition, that spirit of collaboration over competition, and that's the spirit of, you know, like I said, women empowering other women, not putting each other down, not doling our own internal fires, especially in this very exciting time of starting your business. So I'm going to scroll down and I've removed the names here and the photos of the folks involved in this thread, um, just for anonymity's sake. But this person decided to respond to the woman that was super excited. So let's call the woman that was super excited Jane. And let's call the woman that's kind of starting to dull her fire from what I noticed, Karen, <laughs> right? Little joke there for you. Okay, so Jane posts this, super excited. Karen comes in and responds, awesome. Where did you do your certification? Which already to me is a little like, passive aggressive slash kind of um, needle nosing your way into some icky territory where that's immediately going to put doubt in Jane's head where she's like, oh crap, I have to have a certification to do this. I was just excited to go to a new town and start my new business. So where did you do your certification? It's a very like say that you're at a party, maybe you're at a hoity-toity party, and say that maybe you decided not to get a college degree. Maybe you went into a trade. Maybe you started doing hairstyling, or um, you're a nail tech, or you're an esthetician, or maybe you're a realtor, and you didn't go to, you know, traditional college. Maybe you're in an actual trade. Like, maybe you're a female in, I don't know, trucking, or electrical work, or welding. Like, women can do all of these things, believe it or not. We don't have to just go to school, get good grades, go to college and take that traditional route, right? So say that you're at like a fancy hoity-toity party and you know, you're introducing yourself, you're networking with maybe some strangers, people you haven't met. And somebody says, oh, well, where did you go to college? It sounds very stuck up in my opinion, just that one little question, right? It's amazing like how much our words matter. And so it, it's very like, A, you're assuming that somebody had a higher level of education. B, you're assuming that they had the funds to do that. So you're already assuming privilege. And C, you're assuming that you're almost like positioning yourself as better than them. Like, oh, well, where did you go to college? So for example, I got my bachelor's degree in sociology. And I, uh, you know, got it from a state school, not an Ivy League school, not any sort of fancy school, literally a California State University, and not even like one of the big ones that you've probably ever heard of. We didn't even have like an athletic team. We had one fraternity and one sorority, and it was very much a commuter school, which totally matched my style. I was young. I was in my 20s. I was working full time at Nordstrom at the time, you know, working over 40 hours a week and going to college. I didn't want to be involved in uh, fraternities, sororities, or, you know, any of that stuff, athletics. So I just went to school and I got my, I got my degree, right? I got my BA in sociology. So if someone was to come up to me at a party at one of these, you know, say hoity-toity parties with strangers and say, where did you go to college? I'd be, you know, I would be totally honest. If you guys know me, I'm very real, very no BS, very non-sugarcoated. I'd be like, oh, I went to a state school. You probably never heard of it, you know, and whatever and move on. 
But just this one comment, awesome. Where did you do your certification? Just already kind of bothered me, right? Um, she goes, most courses teach the where and how to organize your business, which is great, fine. Like, hey, did you know that there's other courses? All right, moving on. Um, keeping in mind that I had commented on a different part of this thread with like, oh, you know, claim your free business listings on Google My Business, Yelp, find my organizer and Nextdoor. You guys have probably all heard me say that. It's also part of my Get New Clients Fast Guide. I didn't even link my guide. I was just like, hey, did you know you can claim your free business listings, right? And so she was super thankful on that thread, Jane was. So then um, this woman starts kind of going off in here. Jane says, I don't have anything yet. Just looking for practice and ways to start currently. Planning to get everything going once removed. Right. Like, again, that, that super exciting, enthusiastic, motivational, inspirational time when your fire is lit and you get that bee in your bonnet and you're like, oh, my gosh, let's go. I can actually get paid to do what I love. Maybe I'm going to start with friends and family. Maybe I'm going to create a little Facebook group or a Facebook business page or maybe some flyers for around town or at my kid's school or whatever. Right. Never dole somebody else's fire. That's all I have to say on this part of it. So she's like, yeah, just looking to get started, right? Like, hey, lady, lay off, <laughs> you know? She goes, this is Karen. I suggest you get a certification, start a business, register the business, get insurance, determine packages, determine pricing, all before advertising services or ordering business cards. Okay, so now my uh, theory that, you know, she's kind of trying to set herself up as this, person that's, um, you know, trying, sorry, I just set off my, uh, my phone here. <laughs> um, my, my theory is confirmed that she is really trying to kind of needle her way in and try to tell this woman that she's less than for trying to be excited about getting into the industry, which like, A, why would you do that? Just who has time for that? And B, why like give somebody an entire overwhelming laundry list in a freaking Facebook comment when somebody's very clearly excited about getting started and just looking for some like more casual advice. I'm sorry, but last I checked, this Karen person is not a tax attorney. She's not a CPA. She's not a business advisor. So I don't know why somebody would go into this comment thread and say, I suggest you get a certification, start a business, register the business, get insurance, determine packages, determine pricing. I'm sorry, but that's very overwhelming. And that's enough for somebody to walk completely away and say, oh my gosh, that's too hard. I'm going to give up on my dream. Period. Mic drop. It is right. And so I start to get like a little frustrated in my head and I'm like, okay, like let's, you know, let's not dole her sparkle, whatever. And so I respond back to Jane based on, of, on Karen's comment, you don't have to have a certification. Ha ha face, keep going. I'm cheering you on with a couple hearts, right? Like keep going, I'm cheering you on. Don't let this dull your sparkle. You don't have to have a certification. Like basically don't listen to this lady. It's mumbo jumbo. And so this is where it gets real. So Karen responds to me, Melissa, you're going into people's homes providing a service. Well, okay, no shit, Karen, like home, organizer, service-based business. Thank you. Thank you so much for educating me on that point, Karen. You most certainly should have the education and certification to justify charging people for a service. I'm sorry. What was this country built on? What was the U.S. built on? Hard work, getting stuff done, moving forward, making it happen. Railroads needed to be built gold needed to be discovered, dug up. I don't know. Like, I'm not going to get into all of the history here, but to justify charging people for a service is already saying I'm not good enough until somebody tells me I'm good enough. I don't need to justify charging people for a service if I know that I'm really good at it, if I know that I'm naturally gifted and talented at it, if I know that this is a God-given gift and this is part of my purpose in this earthly life, in this life right now that I have to be able to impact my community, serve others, use my gifts, use my natural talents. And then yes, I also get an energetic exchange of currency, of money, in response to that energy that I'm putting out into the world. And you're telling me that I have to justify all of that with a, with a couple letters after my name. Hmm. Okay. All right. Interesting point, Karen. Let's keep going. 
most people paying for someone calling themselves a PO would have an expectation that you've taken a course or two. Okay, that's fine. You can take a course, you can take an online course, you can take my course, you can take whoever's course. You don't have to take a course to become a PO or even, she's not even saying calling themselves a PO, like almost like, again, this snotty tone of like demeaning, oh, well, you can call yours. You can't even call yourself a PO, let alone charge somebody for your services as a professional organizer. Interesting. There is much more to organizing than making things look good. Okay, well, last I checked, this person, Jane, didn't say anything about that. Jane just said, I'm excited to start my business. Who has some tips? There are literally steps to organizing that when done properly are successful. And if not, can lead to frustration for a client. Okay, so now she's telling Jane that her clients are gonna be frustrated with her if she doesn't have a certification. Am I getting this right? And when done properly, okay, so there's one way to organize. Did you write the textbook on how to organize? Is there one type of client? Is there one type of hoarding? Is there one type of disorganization? Is there one type of shopaholic over shopping tendencies? Is there one type of ADHD? Is there one type of ADD? Is there one type of OCD? Is there one type of you know, neurotic disorders, mental disorders? Is there one type of just a busy mom that needs a little help organizing a playroom or a pantry? There's one type, okay, all right, noted. There's no room for any other opinions because this must be done properly in order to be successful and not have people frustrated at you. Okay, Karen, moving on. This is a serious and professional designation and should be respected as such. Okay, <laughs> so you're going into people's homes. Maybe you're playing music. Maybe you're making friends with your clients. Maybe they're feeding you lunch. Maybe you're having tea with them. Maybe you're getting coffee with them on a weekend because they actually became your friend and they're actual humans and you actually enjoy what you do and you actually bring energy to people's homes and you're excited about what you do and you are living your purpose. What about that? Does it have to be serious? Does it have to be a designation? Are we going to meet the queen, Karen? Karen, where does the queen live? Is she serious and professional? Where did she go to college? Where did she get her certification? I don't know, Karen, let's see. Anyone going into someone else's home to provide a paid for service without insurance is a fool. Okay, so now we're talking about insurance. So now she's, she's switching gears. She's switching to speaking about business insurance and giving legal advice to Jane, who by the way, did not ask for any of this. Um, provide a paid for service without insurance is a fool. And in order to get insurance, you'll need to show proof of your designation. Okay, no, I don't have a certification. I don't have a CPL. I've been doing this for 10 years. Even when I hadn't been doing this for 10 years, even when I'd been doing this for 10 weeks or 10 months, I didn't have to have a certification to get business insurance. Period. You can look back at the top 10 tax tips video that I've done you, with, with an actual tax expert. You can look back at the legal live I did with an actual attorney here in the US. You don't have to have a CPO who like you go down to State Farm, you go down to Farmers, you go down to whatever the heck insurance company in your small town and meet with an insurance broker for business insurance. They're not going to say, oh, yes, this is a serious and professional designation and you're a fool if you don't have these letters after your last name. Where is your documentation? Show me your papers. No one has ever said that in the insurance industry, period. I don't know who you're talking to that's telling you that you need to have like proof of your designation because let's not even go there about showing papers in this day and age and showing proof of things. We're not even gonna get there right now. But Karen, newsflash, in order to get business insurance, you do not have to be certified or have letters after your last name. Get with the program, girl, where have you been? All right, now she's starting to wrap it up. So we've, we've moved on just to like kind of recap here. Um, she's educated us that this is a in-home service in case we didn't know. She's also uh, told us that we can't call ourselves professional organizers unless we've had a, a professional designation because this is serious and must be done properly. Then she even decided to school us on some business insurance ins and outs. 
My guess is she's not an actual insurance broker or never been in the insurance industry, but that's a story for another day. So now she's wrapping it up. Very humbly, might I add, and with such modesty, this woman, this Karen, gosh, she is so modest, just so humble, such a giver or such, such a service minded leader in the pro organizer community. I've said my two cents and speak from experience nearly nine years, authored two books and admin of a page of over 300,000 members, decluttered and organized hundreds of homes across the globe, have spoken on radio, TV, podcasts, paid thousands of dollars for courses, done two certifications and working on a third. It's unfortunate not everyone respects and understands the industry. And with that, if you're watching on YouTube, I tip my nose up at you. You swine of the earth is basically what she has said in this you know, wrap up of the comment. I said my two cents and I speak from experience nearly nine years. Okay, that's great, that's fine. I have 10 years of experience too. If you clicked on my little profile, you'd see that, but that's fine. Authored two books, great, I've authored one. I don't really care. Nobody really reads my book. It's there, I had fun writing it. It's on Amazon. It was pretty cool on launch day to launch that thing. And maybe I make a little bit of money on it on Amazon passively, right? I'm not like holding myself to this high standard that I am an author. Like, no. Okay, great. It's really easy to self-publish a book. If you want tips on how to do that on Amazon KDP, hit me up and I'm happy to teach you how to self-publish your own book. It's really freaking easy and free. An admin page of over 300,000 members. Okay, so you're an admin. It's not actually your group. And 300,000 members probably what over the past like five, six years that this Facebook group has been in business. And by the way, she's not talking about this actual Facebook group, because again, it's a much smaller one. That's not even her group or my group. An admin page. Okay, so you're an admin. That's, that's great. It's not your group. Out of those 300,000 women slash members in the group, how many of those are active? Maybe your engagement rate is 10%, 20% on a good day, right? So don't hold yourself to numbers like that. Like no one cares. Decluttered, organized hundreds of homes across the globe. Okay, great. So you helped your aunt Sally that moved to Capri or Italy or wherever the hell she lives and works. Fantastic. We've all decluttered and organized hundreds of homes that have a platform to speak on, like a podcast or a YouTube channel like this one. Have spoken on radio, TV, and podcasts. Yes, this is also something I can teach you how to do. And it's called Hero, Help a Reporter Out by Cision PR. Very easy to pitch reporters because they're constantly looking for new stories, especially like trending topics within the home and design space, like home organizing. If you want tips on how to do that, go to, I think it's hero.net, but you can Google Help a Reporter Out and get yourself on some radio, TV, and podcast like Karen. And then she's paid thousands of dollars for courses. That's great. That's your own money. That implies that you have privilege. That implies that you have thousands of dollars and funds and, you know, wealth, which is great for you. That's fantastic. That's not for everyone. Done two certifications and working on third. My question is why? Why? If that's helping you further your business, fine. If that's like a lifelong learning and professional development thing, leadership growth thing, great, fine. You do you. I listen to a lot of podcasts, read a lot of books, do a lot of courses. I'm NLP certified. I don't stand on that as like, hi, I'm NLP certified and my BA is in sociology. I don't, no one cares. Again, done two certifications, working on third. That's fine. You do you, boo. Not even has to do that. And then it's unfortunate, not everyone respects and understands the industry. So again, with these like snide remarks that are like, you know, not saying, hi, Melissa, you don't respect and understand the industry, but just saying it's unfortunate, not everyone respects and understands the industry. So now that I've moved to Oklahoma, we have this term here in the South slash in the Midwest, bless her heart. And bless her heart is something that you say that's very condescending and kind of like, um, like it's sweet, but like, it's not, it's like a little bit sweet, but it's a little bit sour. And so say that I, I don't know, I took a fall at the grocery store. I slipped on some spilled milk or something, right? Random example that I just pulled out of my head. I slip at the grocery store. And then, you know, this, this Karen woman walks by me and says, Oh, bless her heart. Like you clumsy fool essentially. Right. And so this always gets me. It's like, the most side windy way to speak to someone instead of just saying, hi, I feel like you don't respect the industry. You know what I mean? And then I'm happy to like share. Oh, actually, I've been doing this for 10 years. Actually, I have a podcast, a YouTube, a course, a mastermind, a Facebook group. I've authored a book, blah, blah, blah. Right. Who cares? But 
It's unfortunate not everyone respects and understands the industry. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen after I go back to the original post. Again, this woman, Jane, bless her heart, but like in a good way, <laughs> about to begin my PO journey. I'm moving to a new town in a couple months, advice for sites, right? This is all this woman asked for. And it turned into this woman, Karen, basically shaming her. How dare you think that you could start a business without this laundry list of stuff? And oh, by the way, it's professional and serious and must be done properly. <sighs> ladies. Again, use discernment with everything you see on the internet, whether it's about business, whether it's about parenting, whether it's about nutrition, whether it's about health, whether it's politics, religion, whatever it is, go with your own gut, go with what speaks to you, know your own truth, and don't let somebody dull your sparkle, put out your fire, whatever you want to call it, put your, put their thumb down on you. This is just ridiculous to me that somebody who a doesn't even know this other person Karen doesn't know Jane Jane's just excited about starting a business like throw Jane a bone hey Jane this is what I did to grow my business like wouldn't that be more helpful than shaming someone before they've even gotten started anyway this was my ranty pants video here on pro organizer boot camp I am Melissa Merrill. Again, you can DM me your thoughts on this. Comment below. I'm at Pro Organizer Bootcamp on Instagram. And then if you have questions about everything that I kind of rattled off in here, like if you want to self-publish a book, I'm happy to share with you my tips for free. If you want more press and publicity in your own business, I'm happy to share with you my tips for free. Or if you want to just have like a good old conversation or be a guest on the podcast about this topic, always happy to chat with you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll be back with a new video soon.